Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Nikon Creators Hour. I'm your host, Mike Corrado, and we are here with a very special Creators Hour segment with photographers that have been on assignment with the Z62 or the Z72, Nikon's new entree into the mirrorless world. We have with us today Malik Sidi Bey, a commercial fashion photographer, portrait photographer, press photographer. He's a little bit of everything, and he's going to share his experiences with us. Malik, thanks for being here on the Creators Hour. Thank you so much, Michael, for having me. And hey, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, listen, we're, we're veterans to this now. We've done IG Live. We did a Creators Hour uh, episode on defining your images, your defining images. And uh, it's great to see you again. Again, we haven't seen each other in person for a very long time, but hopefully that'll change moving forward. And uh, thank you in advance for your time talking about, you know, the Z62 and your experiences and the assignment you had recently. And uh, when we do this, I want to go through a little bit of everything, uh, the creative side, how you come to the models, how you put it all together and the concepts that come together. Uh, and then we're going to talk more about the camera, dig into the camera and your first impressions, things you liked, things that you used, and certainly the Z Nikkor lenses that you used. Um, and when we look at your pictures, please don't hold back on any of the settings and I'll try to prompt you into some of the things I'm thinking along the way because I know the people tuning in are really going to want to hear okay sounds like a deal sounds like a deal good now I know you well and I know millions of people know who Malik is but for those tuning in that might not know Malik um, tell everybody a little bit about your background in photography um, well I'm from West Africa I was born in um, Ivory Coast and I grew up in Guinea I moved to the States um, 10 years ago and um, I've been doing photography for about seven years now. It's kind of crazy to say that now. <laughs> but um, yeah, I started out with um, men's web design, but then um, I got into photography through an after school program called NYC Salt. And um, ever since then, I've been doing portraiture, fashion, and um, a little bit of everything. Um, I've done weddings in the past, I've done. Um, events, um, headshots, corporate events. And um, currently my work, a lot of my work is based um, around um, journalism because of everything that's been going on um, since this year started. And then um, I've also been doing a lot of um, commercial and uh, fashion and um, things like that. And, and the work is insanely good. And you people tuning in, you got to get a chance to see this. But here's another one. If, if you see the uh, chat box below and you have any questions about the Z62 or the Nikon mirrorless line, uh, drop those questions in the chat box. And then uh, we have tech standing by to answer them as quickly and efficiently as we possibly can. Um, this, is, this is so much fun, Malik. And I know about your you know, history at NYC Salt. We've worked together there. You were the grand award winner at the Eddie Adams workshop. So if you don't mind me bragging on your talent a little bit, some of the top editors uh, in the world uh, are at that workshop, uh, the Eddie Adams workshop. And, and they selected you over 100 other students or 99 other students. Uh, and so that's, a, that's an amazing thing uh, in its own right. And you've come such a long way in such a short period of time. So even more excited to have you here again so we could talk more about your creative process uh, in this assignment that you had coming up. Now, I know you've shot the Nikon Z7 mirrorless for a little while now. Um, talk about your first impressions when the Z62 was put into your hands. Um, it's funny because when I first saw the camera, um, I didn't see like the the tag that says um, six two, and um, I just it just felt like a Z seven. Felt like I was holding the same camera that I've been using um, this year, and um, it so it felt I felt so familiar with it. And then um, then I turned it on, and then I started seeing what he was doing. I was just kind of like blown away because it was just like my Z6, uh, my Z7 times two pretty much. Um, the autofocus was like my favorite thing um, in the camera because um, I tend to shoot a lot like with movement and I tend to ask my models to move, to dance and jump and stuff like that. And um, having the great um, autofocus on the Z6 two was um, mind blowing. And um, it just felt like it was mimicking everything that I had in my mind that I wanted to do um, and where I wanted to focus and how sharp I wanted to be. And then um, after that, like I started playing around with the ISO and then started doing some slow shutter speed images. I usually dive in, like I usually shoot with a high ISO when I'm doing slow shutter speed, when I'm doing like long exposure, because I want those little lights that are coming in through the camera to be pop to pop and shine in, the, um, in my images and kind of like, you know, it helps me create the movement and the lifelike feelings that I have in my images. And um, 
having those two things, um, like, and the Z62 was like one of my favorite things. And um, it helped me make the images that I did for you guys. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and man, did you score on these images? And it's funny because I, I also have interviewed for this on assignment uh, series, Matthew Jordan Smith. And one might think that AF is not critical in fashion work, but it certainly is, especially when you move your models as much as you move them or they move themselves. And even Matthew was talking about the importance of like shooting wide open with a 105-14. It's even more critical. Uh, and those of you tuning in, really great improvements uh, to the AF accuracy and speed and acquisition. But now we have IAF for animals and people in the system for still and for video. And we actually have IAF in the bigger targets, the larger area focus modes, which a lot of photographers have adopted uh, that have played with the cameras. So, so this is great. Malik, I, I just say we jump into these images. I know you have uh, quite a few here yeah. that we're going to go through. And don't hold back. Again, whatever your impressions are, if I bring something up or you think of something, you know, please jump right in. But I think everybody's going to be quite impressed with uh, what Malik has done here. Um, I know you've sent a few for some of the, the assignments. And again, critical focus on the eyes, right? That's what's most important. Yeah. Um, but talk about the assignment. I also want you to talk about how it comes together and how you piece this together, where you went, if you don't mind sharing that, mm -hmm. and some of the details on building this assignment mm -hmm. uh, as we go. Because I know a lot <laughs> goes on behind the scenes to get to this place, to get to this photo. So you take it away from here. Yeah, it's funny. This is actually one of my favorite images um, from the whole assignment. And um, this, um, I feel like this assignment, one of the most important things was um, the team that we put together. Um, Christina Dittmar was my uh, producer for the shoot. And then um, um, the stylist that I hired was um, someone that was recommended to me, but a close friend of mine. His name is Von Ford. And um, he has amazing taste in clothes. And um, as you can see, like the colors and everything. And um, the makeup artist um, was my friend, Mark. And um, he is also like really talented. And um, so just having a team like that together, my first assistant, Christian Rodriguez, um, everybody's ideas kind of like went into this a little bit. Um, like, for example, like the clothes, um, as soon as like the, when we went to the discounting, I was looking around, I, at first, I, I kind of was like holding back on the location. Like I didn't really know what to feel because I've never been to um, a golf park before. Like I've never been golfing in my life. So I was there like <laughs> looking around and um, then the stylist brought up these clothes that I kind of really liked. And like I, every time I saw um, a piece that he had, I kind of knew already where I would put them. And um, for example, this one with the colors, I knew that I wanted like, um, like colors that would kind of blend in with the clothes a little bit, but still be differentiated. And um, in terms of like the makeup and the look, um, like as you could tell, the model um, like has like a really great look. And I wanted to use like makeup that would kind of help kind of pop that a little bit. Um, not too much colors, but just enough to be seen and um, to be, to look like the way it looks right now. And, um, you know, like having like the, the, the plants in there and just kind of like leading the eyes to him. I know if I put him in the middle of all these things, it would kind of like just be strong and like his colors will kind of like stand out and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, they had in there, like, I felt like everything was kind of, for some reason, I just felt like everything was blending in. Um, the whole outfit looked really great um, as a fool, but like the close end to me, like stood that to me really um, a lot more. If you go to the next image, um, I think you'll see a little bit um of how everything looks so like this is how we, i um ideally started um i placed him in front of this lake and um i think i had one light um just shining on the side and my assistant was like kind of holding that and um but yeah and most of these things too like one thing that um kind of helped me make my images look the way it looked is like my editing process um usually um i try to make my subjects and like the colors and everything look as natural as possible, but yet kind of give it a little bit of dreamy kind of look to it. And um, so it's like a bit desaturated, but they yet it's still saturated. And um, the toning and like the lighting and everything was like, you know, kind of helped make everything that's in there. I don't know if that makes sense at all. It's like I'm jumping. Yeah, make it, it makes yeah. a lot of sense. Uh, I'd like to um, uh, just step back within the camera. Two things um, that I want to, bring up for each of the shots if they're different, but I, I want to talk about the Z Nikkor lenses that you shot with on the assignment. And I don't know if the first image, mm -hmm. uh, what was this shot with? Are they the same lens for both shots? 
No, this one I think was shot with the um, 85 millimeter, um, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. And um, that the reason that is because of like the um, the f stop. I wanted to kind of blur out the background a little bit and uh, make sure that his face was still in focus. And um, this one, I think I shot. Um, Oops, sorry, I'm I'm, ba I'm bouncing like a crazy person. I wanted to go back to this one. So this yeah. is the 80, 85 1.8 Z Nikkor, correct? Yes. yes. And then um, the next one I shot with the um, with the twenty forty seven millimeter, which is actually like the lens that I love the most, and um, I feel like in all the Nikon lenses. Well, it's not my favorite one, but it's like my the one that I use everywhere. Like it, everywhere you see me, somewhere in my bag, there's a twenty forty seven millimeter lens um, with my Z seven. Um, but yeah, the next image uh, I believe was also shot on um, the twenty forty seven millimeter. And um, yeah, we just wanted to catch the same kind of vibe and the same kind of look and the other shots, but him kind of like emotion because um, this outfit also was one of the reasons why I picked this location because the way I saw the light was shining on it and um, seeing how the light was reflecting um, and the water and like how the sun was coming in and like the trees and everything, I just felt like it blended in perfectly. And I'm um, having him there on set and just having playing around and um, have fun because one of the things with me when it comes to photography and um, when it comes to working with subjects, my whole goal is to make them feel comfortable and uh, make them, you know, I just want them to have fun. And I want to create an image that they will look back on and be like, wow, this was a fun day of shooting with Malik. And, um, you know, they got, they get something that they feel connected and feel like they like as well. So that was the goal of this image. I just wanted to create something a bit playful, but a little elegant, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, no, fun on shoots, I think, always keeps the crew going, keeps the models going, certainly keeps you going. Let's yeah. dig into camera settings, and I don't want to assume anything, um, and I, I, this may, these may seem like uh, obvious questions, or the answers would be obvious, but are you shooting in the raw file format? And when you opened up the slot to put in the card, you realize, what, there's two slots there. Do you ever use a backup slot? And, you know, what's the importance of that? But what are the camera settings? Or what file format are you shooting? I want to talk about like white balance settings and things like that, uh, and certainly uh, the AF mode. So let's let's go over those if we could. Um, I always shoot on raw because um, I love my colors. <laughs> that's what I. That's the simplest way I always put it to people. And um, and yeah, and like the the two memory card slot um, for this shoot, I um, I don't think I've, I've used it, but um, usually I like to. Um, make sure my images are being backed up to both memory cards. Um, I always bring as many memory cards as I can um, on set, just because you never know how many shots you're gonna take, right? And, mm -hmm. um, but also, yeah, like when I'm shooting, like this one, um, I was shooting like, like I think the episode was probably somewhere between five and six because, um, you know, he's moving and like I didn't want anything on his body to go out of focus. Uh, I wanted everything to be in focus and still get a little bit of details on the background. So um, that's how I got this one. And uh, one thing that I was kind of amazed by, um, when I uploaded the files onto my computer, um, well, at the time, <laughs> we didn't have a software, um, the, the, my soft, the software that I edit with, which is Lightroom, uh, wasn't reading the format, so I had to convert the images. But I was amazed about how like the colors um, came up on my screen. It looked pretty much the same as um, as um, the way it looked in camera, um, which is kind of something that still amazed me about Nikon cameras. The fact that like I'll look at an image in the computer and uh, it pretty much looks closest um, as it is on the camera. And uh, that kind of still helped me keep my vision in mind that I had on set and just kind of transition that into editing and um, things like that. I don't know if I answer all the questions that you went, um, all the I think you did. I mean, we, we spoke to the AF, we spoke to, you know, the file format and the, the color, the color balance, white balance. Are you making any selections there? Or are you letting it run auto? Um, usually when I'm shooting a bright daylight like this, I always put it on cloudy. Um, that's because I like I just like how that looks and um, I always like you know sometimes I, switch, I change it while I'm editing in Lightroom because it gives that option to change the white balance um there are some time I change but this one I kept it the same um I, I think I was shooting cloudy um throughout the whole thing very very cool um thank you for sharing all these details this is pretty amazing I I, I wanted to sort of just announce the fact or just say that Alfredo uh, from Nikon was with you on this shoot did he have to give you a lot of instruction? You talked about that familiarity before. Uh, yeah. how, how important is familiarity to you when you're trying to shoot and put together this shoot within a minimal amount of time? 
um, and certainly have to progress through an entire day. I feel like the familiarity was really important, especially for this shoot, because um, I didn't get to see the camera until the day I was shooting. So pretty much like if anyone was watching, like I didn't, I didn't know anything about this camera. I didn't know what camera I was shooting with. I didn't, I didn't have any info. All I knew was that it was a camera that works best in low light and it has a great um, um, autofocus system. And uh, when I grabbed it, it literally had everything that you guys said it had and um, the familiarity. It really helped, but I kept asking um, Alfredo so many questions. <laughs> um, one of the cool things that he showed me that I kind of used, um, I still use to this day, is um, when you're shooting, you could set your camera to rate the images as you're shooting, and it would transfer into your Lightroom, and um, you see the images that you rate you rated from five stars. So like that kind of was pretty good because every time I would shoot out, because he was my um, Nikon client on set, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. I'll show you the, him the images and um, I'll see how he reacts to certain images and how he likes them and I'll just rate them right away. And like, it made me felt like I was a little bit ahead of the game in terms of like my editing process and everything. Right. And um, you know, also like sometimes you'll be shooting those shots that you get that you're just like, okay, I want to remember this specific shot. Maybe you look at it later, it doesn't feel the same, but um, I'll just break them right away. And uh, once I put them on my computer, they all show up and um, it just made me a little bit more faster than I usually am um, with editing. So that was really that, cool to learn. So, so critical, a very simple feature like that mm -hmm. puts those pictures up front when you're browsing mm -hmm. and, and it's almost like half the job is done, right? I mean, you get right to the editing at that point. I mean, that's, that's brilliant, Malika. Mm -hmm. Again, I just, I look at your pictures and they are so fresh. You know, I've seen millions and millions of pictures through my 36 years here. So you can imagine um, how amazing it is to see some new fresh work and, and your approach to all of this. And so we move on to this model. Um, we'll still talk camera settings, but talk a little bit about the creative here and what's, what's going on here. What's your thought process as a photographer and artist? This was when we went into the studio. Um, it's funny because um, the day before the shoot, I asked um, Chiara, which is, um, she's the model in this picture. I asked her to, um, um, braid her hair I wanted her to kind because like I had this idea of creating like an epic image that has movement and that shows hair and like not too distracting and everything and um, she braided her so when we got into the studio with her um, I already know what I wanted to do um, I wanted her to move around and show off the hair that was like the main part um, with this look I love the outfit but the main thing I wanted to play around with was the hair and um you know, shine a little bit of warm light in there to kind of balance out the um, the cool tone in there. And um, this is when um, the autofocus came in play. And this is when I really, really, really fell in love with it. And uh, I just, I don't know, it just like, it just felt so natural. Um, I love the fact that now the autofocus has like the green square on there, uh, where it's like, even if you don't have the dot where you want it to be, it will focus wherever that green square is. I don't know what you call that. Do you have a name for that? Or it's, it's a focused target. Yeah, what it yeah. is, is all kinds of things going on in the background, face recognition. Um, subject recognition, it's recognizing the face. So what Malik's pointing out, and I believe it's yellow, yellow screen, but yellow, um, if it doesn't see, if it, if it sees the eyes, it goes right to the eyes, right? You see a little box over the eyes. If it doesn't see the eye in a shot like this, the box for the head, face, will then appear. Um, so it, there are different levels of the AF for accuracy, you know, when it comes to tracking the subject. So everything that's happening transparently through something that, Listen, I just absorb as a fact, there's two yeah. processors in the camera, there's dual processors now in the Z6 II and the Z7 II. So all the great scientific work that goes into understanding photography, understanding the subjects, being able to recognize and un understand this is the reason why you're excited and we're excited that you're excited uh, because it makes your life that much easier. As seasoned as you are becoming, uh, every one of us needs a little help and aid when it comes to AF from time yeah. to time. So I'm excited that you're excited about that. But and that's all of what's going on, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like it's um, like the Z7 that I have, it's funny, I had like similar experience with that back in uh, March when I started photographing the protests in Brooklyn. Um, I was running with the people and like I kept running, like catching actions and people all over the place. And um, 
I felt like if I had the Z6 II, it would have been totally different. Like, I felt like at the time, I felt like, wow, like the Z7 is amazing at doing this. It's catching everything I wanted to catch. Until I started playing around with the Z6 II, and I was just like, what? Like, how can it even be um, better than what I had? And um, so, yeah, that's what, like, what mainly stood out to me when he came to this one portrait, just like the fact that he was capturing the movement. Every shot felt like the shot I wanted. And uh, I must have taken so many shots because I'm just like, how can I make this better still? I got an idea was just keeping getting better, um, better every time I was shooting. And I ended up picking this one image because the way she looked, her eyes was closed in this one. And um, she was just looking up and the way the light was hitting on the side and highlighting. And um, I didn't really do much retouching on the hair because I wanted to look as raw as possible. And um, that's one of the things about my images. Um, I don't really like to do too much retouching. Um, I try to make things look as natural as possible. I feel like to me personally, it helped me get attracted to whatever image that I'm looking at because um, I feel like sometimes people tend to be too perfectionist. And um, I feel like that's, you know, for me, to me, it's not really the point of image making. I feel like for, I feel like for me, image making is creating something that's, that you could relate to that looks as natural as possible, but yet you could still kind of create this dreamy, kind of feel from it and um you know something like, I, I think realistic fiction is the word that i'm looking for <laughs> mm -hmm. no that's great it's funny because dreads dreads are tough to work with and so i um i have some experience with a couple of drummers that move very quick yeah. and the hair goes back and the dreads start flying and it, you know one crosses the eye or crosses yeah. the wrong part that's yeah. probably a, a good reason to continue to shoot uh, mm -hmm. as much as you did do you remember which lens? Did you take the 85-18 in, indoors? What are you shooting with here? Um, if I recall correctly, I think maybe this this one um, might either be the 85 millimeter or um, the 24-70. It's so funny because I kept switching back and forth so many times that mm -hmm. um, like every look has probably, I changed like the lens probably like five, six times um, mm -hmm. in order to get the shots that I wanted. So yeah, this time I'm, I believe this one is either the 85 millimeter or the 2470. And the 2470 you're using was it the F4 version or the 2.8 version for Xenia? Uh, I believe it's the F4. Yeah. Very cool. And we're still indoors now because I know we tasked you to shoot indoors and out, press the ISO, press the speeds. Mm -hmm. uh, what's happening here? Well, this one is where another shot where the ISO also comes in play with the autofocus as well. Um, I had him dancing on set <laughs> pretty much. Um, I was kind of giving him a little bit of direction, but most of the movement that the, um, he was doing, most of it came from him. Um, it was just adding into his personality because uh, one of the things about photography to me, you don't really want to make the models do things that they've you know, they're not used to doing things that they're not comfortable with doing. And when I was casting for this look, I was thinking pe about people that I know who move and do the movement that I want them to do. And um, same thing again, like the makeup artists and the stylists really came through with the looks that they had. Um, like the, um, the strawberry shirt that he had on and like the black pants and like his skin color um, and like the grayish background and um, the green makeup on his eyes. It's funny because that was actually not like that. It's a slow shadow speed photo. So that's why you caught that green going up and almost looked like it was there, um, like it was there on set, but it was just like a little green dot that was on his eyes. And then um, the way we set the lighting, it kind of captured the movement a little bit. And, um, but yeah, this was a slow shadow speed image. Um, it wasn't really that, so I think it was probably like um, 130th. Um, or something and then um, the ISO was like I, think I was shooting pretty much like 1200 ISO or like a thousand ISO in this one and um, same thing the movement like even though he was moving his hands were still sharp enough for you to see it and uh, his look and like you know like the emotions and the images I feel like really add into everything in here and um, yeah like I just like I don't know what it was to say I feel like the camera really did what he do um and it's like the next few images um you see um this one it was also like a little movement i kept i took off my camera off the tripod and actually started work walking around and following him as he was moving that's how some of the images got shadows in them but i kind of didn't really mind um i set the lighting not to have the shadow but if you move at certain angles you'll start to see the shadows in there um, but it felt like it all added to everything that was there, like the way he's looking, the way the light was hitting, his, like the highlight was on his chin, and um, 
like everything in this image, I felt like really add in perfectly. And um, the autofocus honestly was one of the reasons why these look the way they look. Uh, if it wasn't for that, most of them would have been blurry. Mm. Did you strobe light or did you use a constant light source? Yeah. Um, this was a strobe light. I use um, Proforto. But the thing, interesting thing about this, that's really cool. Um, when you're using Proforto's and set the, um, um, the beauty light on, um to kind of stay on even when you're not shooting um the model light i mean um mm -hmm. so like whenever i'm shooting slow shutter speed the little cameras kind of capture both like it will capture the strobe and also the continuous light that comes after um so i guess you could say both of them. <laughs> yeah. beautiful i know uh, alfredo had mentioned you know like he was watching your lighting and it's pretty amazing and mm -hmm. again i think the shadow plays to your style from what i've seen from you and the growth of your images you know, from when you first started showing me your work uh, to now, it's just that you've got such an incredible style with all of this coming together and the animation and the movement and and everything you're doing. This this is just a wild image. So you're dragging the shutter here too a little bit. So we're seeing a bit more of the motion that you're talking about. But to take us through this picture again, if you remember the lens, it's like the lens. And um, um, I think this one, if I believe so, it was a 24 to 70. Um, it was the same thing. I had taken off my camera off the tripod and started following him as he was dancing. I got closer to him a little bit, but the fact that I was shooting with the 2470, um, it looks closer than I was actually was, but um, just kind of following his body as he was moving and uh, making sure my shutter speed was low enough, but not too low to kind of make everything blurry and the ISO was strong. And like, you know, that's how we got the details on his skin. And um, you see how like the colors are kind of floating throughout the image and like his hands is kind of blending in with the background and um, all the moves that I feel like like the ISO really helped out brought out like the details with like the little shiny spots um, which to me is really cool um, some of the last images you'll see one of the shots that I'm talking about I feel like you really did a thing there and um, but yeah this image is one of them it's just the movement and um, the camera was doing what it's supposed to do it helped they put like you know it helped me capture the settings that I want and also the energy of the model and like the makeup artist everybody that was there and set everybody just kept shining and it was like good energy which I feel like also helped get the model to look the way he looks and how comfortable he is to move and um, yeah. <laughs> I, I tell you then and, and as a viewer someone looking at your work it's like the impact is just so amazing and the impact comes together even just those blurs of green up on the face where someone might say well, that's not really my thing. You make it work. And I think that creates, like you said, the energy of the model, the energy of the shoot itself. Yeah. But with the 2470 F4, looking at this, the detail in the eyes, the detail in the skin, mm -hmm. in the sharp parts of the frame, I mean, it almost makes it look like a higher resolution camera than it really is yeah. um, because it's about speed and it's about, you know, high ISO with the Z6 II as it was with yeah. the Z6. But just, I, it's phenomenal the way you play this out. Again, there's nothing random about any of this, right? Except the movement of the model, because you're putting the fashion together. I, I just, I could stare at this picture, the color, everything, the energy. Uh, talk about this image a little bit. I'm fascinated by it. Um, this image also is one of those things where it's like, you know, the stylist brought a great look. And uh, I remember looking at this dress because we shot it outside too. But the whole time I was like, I was like, I want to get this to studio. Like, I want to. Um, do something with this in the studio. I want to kind of like play around with the with the colors. And I spoke to the hairstylist um, who was also the makeup artist. Um, I was like, I want something in the hair that would kind of match with the outfit. And like the fact that it's layered and like the lines are all going. I feel like we get similar colors in the hair. I mean, in her hair um, moving kind of similarly and like her emotions. I think I, for this one look, I probably must have photographed her, like I probably must have took like 500 shots uh, to actually really find what I like. It's, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, um, especially if you want to capture movement, it's one of the things you have to keep doing until you find the image. Um, Cause like the model could be moving, they know what they're doing, but you have to capture that movement at the right time. And um, the model have to be doing the right thing. And um, so i like capture, a little bit more than I was supposed to, <laughs> that I needed to. Um, but then went through and picked out the images. It's like, uh, when I was editing this, I remember her face was in focus, but the dress was a little bit out of focus a little bit. And um, I just used the brush and went over a little bit and just popped the colors just a little tiny bit. And then, um, yeah, you know, gave it a little bit of clarity so it's flowing. And then um, 
worked with the colors and we popped every color up a little bit. And, um, you know, with, again, like all my images, I want to make them look as natural as possible. Even though you see that the cut, like the clothes is like very colorful and it's like warpy, but you could kind of imagine it in real life. You could kind of see someone and this look in real life and the skin color the same and um, the lip color, the um, like the color of her hair, like everything, I, I feel like it, you know, I didn't, it wasn't, it, can't go above this like you know you can't go past this if i feel like if i push it a little too further it would just kind of look weird but like like i got it just somewhere enough that's just more realistic and uh, more relatable if that makes sense it makes total sense and i love the fact that you brought up that you shot a lot here because there's nothing wrong with shooting a lot now my dad and i used to get into this quite a bit because you used to shoot with a speed graphic one frame at a time yeah and he always used to when i showed a bunch of pictures Oh, I used to get that in one shot. And I said, well, I kind of got it in one shot. There's just 600 around that one shot uh, that I also use. And I mean, that's, what, that's, you, that's using the technology. Yeah, I've had so much conversations like that with people. Usually I feel like um, people that like to shoot a film. <laughs> well, back in the day, Malik, we only had 36 frames max. At one point in time, it was only 24. And then we'd have to go get the film processed, you know? Um, but uh, no, I think it, it means everything because then you do find that one gem, right? Mm -hmm. The diamond, yeah. uh, if you will. And the, the posture of the hands, the mm -hmm. posture of the face, the neck, the head tilted down, yeah. the dreads, like you say, exposing areas of the face where you still see the color of the lips. Yeah, it's like... Uh, and amazing. It, yeah, even though like I'm like a perfectionist, I feel like, I mean, I've, even though I said like I, I don't aim for perfection, I, I feel like at a certain level I'm still like, uh, a perfectionist because I know exactly what I'm looking for. Um, so that's also kind of in place with taking a lot of images to get the right look that you want. You want to push it. You don't want to, you know, the first shot looked great. You know, I could have settled with that, but I just was like, you know what, right. let me get a little bit more to see what else could come out of this. And, you know, I feel like sometimes with patient, um, you get great things, you know? Yeah. I feel like there's a belly meter for photographers. You start to shoot and you feel it, right? And your adrenaline starts to push and then it rises in your belt. Oh my God, it's getting there. I'm, oh, I hit it. Wait, I hit it. Let me go one more. Let me go 10 more. Hold on. If I got that one, I can go better with this one. It just progressively goes up the ladder. Um, Alfredo would say that's how this shoot went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the excitement level gets there, but then you, do, you never settle. And that's a great thing because when you come back, at least you know you've exhausted the effort. If I stop too soon, I was like, oh, my God, I wish I would have. Yeah. It's too late to go I back. Feeling. I hate going home and be like, oh, I wish I would have pushed it a little bit more. I get these shots. Mm -hmm. so I was like, I'll get as many good ones as I can on set and then worry about the rest later. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. And this is all part of that same shoot. Yep. Again, more details, different posture, different angle. Um, let's keep talking about this. This is fascinating. I think this one is all in the eye, right? Like, I feel like, you know, we were even talking about the autofocus, but like, this is one of those images that you were like, okay, cool. Like, let me see it without it, um, the subject really moving. And like, let me zoom in and see how focused this is. Like, I remember when I was editing this, I kept zooming this into my screen. And like, um, whenever I stop editing for a little bit and take a little break, I'll just put this one image on my screen and then um, just keep walking back in my room and just looking at it. I'm like, wow, like, this is really amazing. And it's just, I catch and like you start with the eye and then you start looking down like where the hair goes and like the colors um and everything it's still one of my favorite images um i can't wait to start um to post this on my website actually i don't know why i haven't posted it up yet but um it's one of my favorite one as well you know like with everything that we just spoke about and like the details and the colors and the highlight on her on her cheek um you know the movement and the hair and um yep yeah, i feel like it did what he do <laughs> no really well done and again the, to me that iaf is just off the charts when i'm photographing porches especially kids running mm -hmm. um you know it just it makes all the difference in the world to give you the confidence to just keep shooting yeah. and it's gotten so much better you know as we progress in technology that um you know, the, the engineers, I just, I take my hat off to every Nikon engineer because, you know, the one thing, and I'm privy to this, and we talk about this all the time, you know, I'm looking at something, and if you really want to go into the details of this image, you look at the bottom left corner, sharp. You look at the eyes, sharp. Yeah. So the sharpness edge to edge from this mount in the, in the Z mirrorless system, 
where again, most people won't think about it because it's, you know, data on a piece of paper or on, you know, a website. There's a lot that goes into the color science. There's a lot that goes into the sharpness and looking through the viewfinder and the sharpness and color uh, within the viewfinder that matches the end result. I mean, there's a lot of color consistency yeah, too. It's like what helps images make um, look the way they look, you know, like sometimes you look at an image and you don't know where you like it. You know, you're like, there's just something about this image. It's very simple, but I don't know why you like it. Maybe it's like the fact that the eye is the most focused point and the image and everything else. Like maybe it's about how the, um, how the focus kind of draws you into one thing, you know, like there's like, I feel like most of the time when I look at an image and I'm just like, Oh wow, I really like this besides like the artistic form of, but there's just something else about it that they that make like, you know, you I feel like when you come down to the bottom of it, it's usually like what um the settings of the camera that kinda up the game a little bit, you know, because I could take the same photo on a different camera, but if it did not have the different kind of um f stop, um something like that, maybe the eye would have been out of focus and you wouldn't feel about the same way about the image as you did. So all these little things to me, I feel like are very important into making the image and um, it's very important to pay attention to all of them. Um, and Beautiful. I think Icon does a great job at that too. You know. I'm, glad, I'm glad you feel that way, so do we. <laughs> um, uh, really went to a little bit of monochromatic here, black and white. Um, yeah. Talk about this image. Again, I go back to what I had said earlier about uh, a, an image of this gentleman and the detail and the sharpness within the eyes, but the skin texture, the suit jacket, the little fringes on the collar, you know, of, of material, it's just incredible. So what's, ha what's happening here? Um, so this is one of those images, right? Like, you know, like I was the whole time I was kind of talking about how I love the colors of the outfit and I love where we place them and everything. Um, this was one of those looks where I was like, he was wearing a great outfit. Um, he looked great. And the place that we had him located at, I didn't really like the colors against that area. I mean, I still did some images, but the whole time I was shooting, I'm like, I want to up this a little bit. I don't know what really to do. But then I was like, you know what? Black and white, white might be the way to go. Um, like I, like, I didn't know how it would look at the point, but I'm like, okay, you know what? Let me worry less about the colors. Let me worry less about the environment. Let me try to kind of angle him at a neutral screen and um, capture his personality, his look, and um, even his style. Like, you know, even though you don't see the whole outfit, you kind of get a little hint of his style and his image and the way he's looking. I focus more on, like, um, I focus more on how he looked and um, how sharp his face is. Like, you can see, like, the focus is on his eyes, his nose, and um, oops, excuse me. It's okay. You're, you're a popular dude, man. It's okay. <laughs> his focus is on his eyes and his nose. And if you look at his ears, his ears is a little bit out of focus, but then the jacket is still in focus. You're getting all these details. So I was focusing more on that in terms of like, not so much about the color because I didn't really like the color image. So this image, right when I took into Lightroom um, to edit, I knew exactly what I wanted to do to it. I went straight to monochrome and then um, put it in black and white and started editing it in black and white. I toned his skin color um, a little bit and um, just kind of, you know, make it blend and make it flow. And um, I feel like the angle I was at and the way his eyes was leading out of the frame um, and the angle he was looking and his head tilts a little bit, I feel like all of that really added into the image. And um, same thing again, the autofocus, um, the focus on it helped me create the feeling I get from this image. If that makes sense. Um, but yeah, that's what it's been about. And it's one of my favorite shots. I like, I remember the other day I was showing it to someone and I was just like, it reminded me of those um, photos that you would see in a photo textbook, you know, when they're talking about leading lines and like um, black and white and portraiture. I've, I've, I've read a lot of photo books. So I feel like it reminds me of an image that I will find in like a photo book of a standard photography. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's <laughs> what I was going to say. No, and, and I think it's important, especially those uh, that don't know this, that, you know, when you're shooting the raw format, I choose to shoot in black and white in camera quite a bit. I think I share that sentiment with a lot of millions of other people that the tonality in black and white is just phenomenal in black and white when you have that control in the monochrome mode in our picture controls yeah. that allows you to change contrast in certain aspects of the black and white uh, also allows you to filter it red, yeah. green, blue, yellow, orange, um, gives you a lot of possibilities in camera, but should you have thought that maybe that wasn't the right choice, you go back into the computer, you can actually revert it back to color and yeah. see it both ways. Yeah. A lot of times like you, when you're not happy with the color and shooting rock and roll, when the lights are not gelling right, that's it's my perfect. first choice to go to black and white. So it's interesting, some people shoot 
in color all the time than convert. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that you shoot in black and white because I do that in camera a lot. Yeah. I think it's a really, uh, a really important feature to have. Mm -hmm. And we just keep going on. We're still in the studio here, right? Or are we outdoors? Oh, this is outdoor now. <laughs> ah, see, you fooled me. Good. Talk <laughs> about this picture. These so, are awesome, Malik. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. So this is also, you know, similar to like the last shot um, he had on this great outfit. And the location that I had originally picked out for this outfit, um, it was the same location that we shot it. But um, it didn't really match with the clothes as I imagined it to be. And I was shooting, you know, so, okay, this is really not hitting the spot. Um, I want to do something to it. And then um, we were at a golf course. So, like, you know, you could imagine how you go up these little hills and then come down. So he was hanging around the area. And he went up the hill and I started looking at him. I was like, wait, that's what we need to do. The sky is light blue right now. It's settled and um, your outfit will match the color. And um, I just got to put you against the, um, the, the sky. And that's what he was. Um, this image, I originally, actually, it's, um, now I can't remember if it was upside down or it was silent, but I know I flipped this somewhere. Um, but mm -hmm. um, he was just there kind of like roaming around and like playing. And I was just like, okay, that's the look. I got my assistant to um, bring the light closer to him and light him. And I was just like, you know, fly. Like, you know, like, and also the title of the, um, when I was assigned this project, the fact that I couldn't really disclose the client and who it was, so I just called it the free bird project. So I was just like, well, be a free bird and um, just, you know, act like you're flying and just relax. And um, Hamza, he's the model. He's, um, he's really um, in tune with himself. Like, you know, he's um, very spiritual and you could tell the way, by the way he carries himself and the way he acts, the way he talks. So you could imagine how, like, you know, how free like, he gets when he's like in the nature, he just get calmly and just moving. And even though he's working and modeling, but he's just like, you can right. tell how his spirituality and his personality add into the images. And he would just, I just caught him in the movement and then, um, yeah, I didn't do that much editing to this one as well because I wanted to look natural. I wanted to look relatable. And um, it kind of creates a little bit of illusion because it's outside, but you think it's um, studio, but there's clouds in the image. And You fooled me. Uh, listen, <laughs> that's not hard. That's not hard to do anyway. But I also see, like, it looks like you put a little color in the face, a yeah. little bit of makeup. Yeah, yeah. so that was some, some similar style of makeup that he had. I think it's pretty much the same makeup that he had in the first image that we saw. Um, it was just a different, I guess, a different screen. So like, you know, um, it wasn't too much color, but like just enough color on his face to kind of direct people's eyes to it. And then um, the hat also went well with the clothes. So that was really good. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. More motion. I love your motion work. What's happening here? Well, slow shutter speed. Um, my favorite thing to do. This was um, my favorite shot of all this um, shoot. Not because of like, how, like you know, I, I feel like, the colors like you know what I mean like the way it's flowing I feel like the image is walking to me and the colors are flowing and I could tell that he's looking at me and I could tell like you can't see his arms you know and it's like a bright red color and um and if you could see a little bit it's one of this was one of those images that you take and it will be a little bit too over um over um exposed um if you see like the highlight on the side a little bit it's a little bit but I feel like it's still perfect you know like sometimes Mm -hmm. This is one of the things when I'm working, when I'm shooting, um, I'll take an image that usually someone would throw away, like, you know, because, it's, oh, it's too overexposed or it's too dark. Sometimes I'll brighten them up and see how it would look if it was a little bit even not. And it's one of those that I looked at it. I was like, there's something about this image that I really like. I love the feeling it gave me. I love the movement. And so I played around with the lighting and, um, you know, the ISO came and played a lot in this because I think the shutter speed was so... Um, the shutter speed was low, so like it was a little bit, and the 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 strobe light we had was um overexposed. So like, the, but the mm -hmm. eyes so, so kind of like you know helped kind of get all these details that was in the darkest part of the image, and um, brought those out a little bit. And the movement still you still kind of see his shape, and it's still a little abstract. And um, it's just one of those images that I'm like, this will kind of give me a break when I'm looking through the gallery. Like I'll look at this, I'm like, oh, this is a little different from all of them but it still kind of relates to it because it's the same model it's the same kind of clothing that he had um i just yeah. it in perfectly <laughs> fascinating I, again you know where uh, this is a subjective business that we're in and you look at this and you know you see it you see everything you just said you know in your mind and how you're creating this and uh, just so beautifully done 
and we're in the now it, we're in the same location with this model. Yeah. yeah. And, and you're just trying different things. Keep going because this is well, fascinating. The image was pretty much um, the same look uh, with the jacket up. Um, we were shooting this, and I love um, this. Was the we shot this before the other the last one we just showed. Um, I kept shooting this, and as you could tell, like, you know, I was getting so many great images and his posture and like his look and his um, personality all kind of like was helping me create this image and like the movement he was doing was really good. And I was like, okay, maybe take off the jacket and like uh, um, the clothes, like he had like this dragon with fire, like, you know, going around it. and he was just kind of like, I, I had him like in the movement and that's how we got the spin um, and the other image because I asked him to spin and um, just kind of catch the movement to kind of relate it to the clothes he was wearing. And um, that's where the last image came from. It pretty much came from this one. Um, but yeah, this is also another one of my favorite. I wanted to keep this one simple, you know, like the, it was like a, like a big shade of black and then like um, the hat and just, it was just more of like the posture he was doing in here and um, the movement and um, yeah. And the same thing with the F-stops and the, um, sorry, the autofocus, it was just going. <laughs> I love it. I, I love your passion with all of this. Yeah. An image like this, stunning to me. Yeah. I mean, all, all of what I've seen so far is really great work, Malik, and thank you for all of this. Thank but you. something like, again, when you feel the texture, when you feel the detail, when you mm -hmm. feel the range, you know, within this image, there's yeah. an energy and impact to this where you don't need movement, mm -hmm. right? Impact comes in many different forms. Exactly. Talk about this, uh, this portrait. Yeah, this is one of those um, things. Uh, I had him on set, and um, he was, you know, he was, I was, first I was asking him to move around, but then after that, I realized that when he was just hanging out, he's, he was still, when we're, like, the time when, between when I'm, like, changing my lens and stuff like that, I was still look at him, and um, he will still just be moving around and looking around, and his personality, I feel like, really, um, really helped a lot especially during throughout these all these images that we got i feel like if we didn't have um hamza the images would have looked the way it looked um you know and also having a camera that help us bring those personality out i feel like you know it it's what we live for you know and um same thing with this the iso came and help and um the shutter speed um like the, no, sorry, not the shutter speed. The autofocus um, really like helped a lot too, because like every I was moving around him the whole time he was moving, and then I just got closer to him, and he was just kind of like moving and like kind of like going like this, and then I was trying to catch it at a point that's like you know um, perfect. So with the same thing, like I probably must have captured um, hundreds of images to get this one specific one, but I knew exactly what I wanted to go for. And um, I didn't want to stop until I see that one image that I'm just like, okay, cool, this is what I'm looking for. And that's how this one came about and um, uploaded on my Lightroom and then saw the details in there. I was even more blown away. And um, I think it was the first image I edited from the whole shoot. I was just like, I got to go back to this one image because it was like, it, there was something about it that I really liked. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. <laughs> outstanding, outstanding, outstanding. Um, let me uh, bring you back up. This is this is fascinating to me. And again, you and I have a history together. So to be here talking to you about a shoot uh, gives me a lot of insight, you know, to what you're thinking about and ideas for all of us to share. So, you know, thank you, Malik, for getting into so much detail. But you bring such a passion to this and such a talent. Uh, I'm sure everybody enjoyed it. So thank you for giving us your time. Thank you so much, Mike. I really appreciate it. It was lots to talk to you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always fun to see you. Hopefully, we'll see each other in person uh, at some someday soon. Uh, we don't have to do this virtually, uh, and I know we'll get there. Just a little matter of time. Uh, those of you tuning in, I hope you got something out of this session with uh, Malik CD Bay. Um, uh, Malik, can you spell out your name so everybody wants to check you out on Instagram? What's your handle? Uh, my Instagram handle is Malik CD Bay, which is um, M A L I K E S I D I B E. I think if you just Google the hottest photographer on the planet right now, you'll probably find Malik as well. <laughs> but thank you, uh, Malik, uh, for your insight. And um, uh, I've learned quite a bit. Uh, those of you tuning in, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for listening in. Um, I hope some of your questions were answered earlier uh, in the chat box. And um, we appreciate your time and your energy and passion and love for this business uh, of photography, the art of photography. And uh, we certainly uh, appreciate you tuning in. 
Check out NikonUSA.com and the Creators Hour for more segments uh, on assignment of those photographers and filmmakers that work with the Z62 and Z72. You'll get their insight as to how they set the cameras and their impressions. We thank you for sharing time with us. Everybody out there, get out, shoot pictures, share them with the world, share them with us. We'd be excited to see them. And everybody stay safe. For Nikon, I'm Mike Corrado, and we'll all see you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye, Malik. <laughs>